Imagine a world where computer systems are designed not to trust, but to verify. This is the essence of zero trust security. In the past, we built security like a castle and moat. We trusted anyone inside the castle walls. But what if the enemy was already inside? Zero trust assumes that no user, device or network inside or outside an organization's perimeter can be trusted by default. It's like having a security checkpoint at every door inside the castle, not just at the main gate. In today's digital landscape with threats evolving faster than ever, zero trust is not just a good idea, it's essential. Data breaches are becoming increasingly common, costing organizations millions and eroding trust. Zero Trust helps mitigate these risks by enforcing strict access controls and minimizing the impact of a potential breach. Traditional security models relied on perimeter-based defenses. Think firewalls and VPNs. These tools were designed to keep bad actors out, but they offered little protection once someone was inside the network. The rise of cloud computing, mobile devices, and remote work has rendered these traditional approaches obsolete. Our data is no longer confined to a physical location, and neither are our users. The network perimeter has become blurred. Imagine a drawbridge that only lets certain people in. That's the old way. Zero trust is like having a personal bodyguard for each person, constantly checking their ID and making sure they're supposed to be there. The old security model is like locking your front door but leaving all the windows open. Zero Trust is about securing every point of entry, every window, every door, and every room in the house. Zero Trust is built on three core principles. Verify explicitly, use least privilege access, and assume breach. These principles work together to create a comprehensive security posture. Verify explicitly means never trusting, always verifying. Every user and device must prove their identity before accessing any resource. Think of it like two-factor authentication but for everything. Least privilege means users and devices only have access to the information and resources they need to do their jobs, and nothing more. It's like giving someone the key to the front door but not the keys to the safe. Assume breach means accepting that a breach is not a matter of if, but when. Organizations need to be prepared to detect, respond to, and recover from breaches quickly and effectively. The first principle of zero trust, verify explicitly, is all about confirming identities. Just because a user or device has access to the network doesn't mean they should have access to everything. This principle requires strong authentication methods, such as multi-factor authentication. MFA adds an extra layer of security by requiring users to provide two or more forms of identification. Think of it like needing a password and a fingerprint to unlock your phone. Another important aspect of verifying explicitly is device authentication. Not all devices are created equal. Zero Trust requires organizations to verify the security posture of devices before granting access to resources. This can involve checking for up-to-date security software and ensuring compliance with company policies. Least privilege only what you need. The second principle, least privilege, is about limiting access to only what is absolutely necessary. This means granting users the minimum level of access they need to perform their job duties and no more. Think of it like a library. You wouldn't give everyone access to the rare books vault. You would only grant access to the librarians and researchers who need it. The same principle applies to data and resources in a zero trust environment. Implementing least privilege access requires a granular approach to permissions. Administrators need to carefully assess the roles and responsibilities of each user and grant access accordingly. This can be a time-consuming process, but it is essential for maintaining a strong security posture. Assume breach, always be prepared. The final principle, assume breach, is about accepting that breaches are inevitable. No matter how strong your defenses are, there is always a chance that a determined attacker could find a way in. This principle emphasizes the importance of having robust incident response plans in place. Organizations need to be able to quickly detect, contain, and remediate breaches to minimize the damage. Imagine a fire drill. You don't practice for a fire because you expect one, but you practice so you're prepared if one happens. Assume breach is about having a plan in place to minimize damage and recover quickly. Implementing Zero Trust, Where to Start Implementing Zero Trust is a journey, not a destination. It's not something you can achieve overnight. Start by identifying your most critical assets and data. These are the crown jewels that attackers are most likely to target. 
Next, map out all the ways users and devices access those assets. This will help you identify potential attack vectors and areas where you need to strengthen your defenses. Once you have a good understanding of your assets and how they are accessed, you can start implementing zero trust controls. This might involve segmenting your network, implementing strong authentication methods, and adopting a least privilege access model. Don't try to do everything at once. Start with small, manageable steps and gradually build up your zero trust maturity over time. The future of security is zero trust. Zero trust is not just a passing trend, it's the future of security. As organizations continue to embrace cloud computing, remote work, and the Internet of Things, the need for zero trust will only become more critical. Organizations that adopt zero trust will be well positioned to protect their data and systems from even the most sophisticated attacks. They will be able to operate with greater confidence and agility, knowing that their security posture is robust and adaptable. Zero trust is not a silver bullet. It's a security framework that requires careful planning, implementation, and ongoing management. However, the benefits of zero trust far outweigh the challenges. Conclusion. Embrace zero trust. Embrace the future. In an increasingly interconnected and threat-filled world, zero trust is no longer optional. It's imperative. By adopting its principles, verify explicitly, use least privilege, and assume breach organizations can build a robust security posture that protects their data, systems, and reputation. Embracing zero trust is not just about implementing new technologies. It's about adopting a new mindset, one that assumes breach, verifies everything, and grants access with caution. It's about moving away from outdated security models and embracing a more proactive and dynamic approach. The future of security is here, and it's built on a foundation of zero trust. By embracing this new paradigm, organizations can navigate the evolving threat landscape with confidence and resilience. If you learned something new, like the video, share your thoughts in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more related videos.